Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cine Cool, and this is Gems of War. And today I have your weekly preview for the week of September 18th, 2023. So we'll be going over the uh, Soul Forge, the Event Key Drop Table, the Glory Shop, the Under Spire, the Epic Trials, the Raid Event, the Campaign, all that good stuff. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, Chatathon this Sunday, this Sunday, 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 Monster Trucks, Butt Crack of Dawn. Uh, starts at 5 a.m. EST. Let's go. Would really appreciate y'all being there. All right. Ray of Hope. New epic troop, Manta Raider. Get this troop of glory from the wards tab of the shop. Talk like a pirate day gym sale. Raid boss. Help your guild close the portals this week. Use troops from a kingdom, Atlantis, and daily battles to defeat the raid boss. We'll link a video at the end of this video. Has two teams on it, high level and low level. The Dread Captain's Chest, new rewards every week, don't miss out. That's the campaign, 13 more days of that. Week of Merlantis, all Merlantis troops gain 10% to skills. Week of Merfolk, all Merfolk gain 10% to their skills. And bonus gold if you use the Manta Raider in PvP and Explore. Let's go to that Soul Forge, see what I can recommend. Let's put them in order, because it's always fun to do, no matter what's in here. So let's check it out. The Elder Dragon. The Arch Deva. Obsidious and the and Fallen Bounties. Fallen, Fallen Bounties is the worst. We can put that to the side. Um, Obsidious is most likely the best. Top 20? Top 20, I would say, right? Not top 10. Probably not top 15, but it's in there. I think it made the top 20. Uh, I'm trying to recall. It's in, between, it's in like the 15 to 20, so I can't remember 100%, but I'm pretty sure it made the top 20. And if it did not, it was an honorable mention. Um... 24 red, purple, brown, Draxum, Daemon, Elemental. Uh, deal heavy splash damage to a random enemy, destroy a 5x5 block. There's a 50% chance to deal light splash damage to a random enemy. Earthquake, stun all enemies on 4 or 5 gym matches. Uh, stone skin, 50% skull reduction, and a dust storm when an enemy dies. Top 20, we look for top 10s in the Soul Forge though, so if you're being super uh, patient, you would want to not get Obsidious, but if you have most of the top 10s, it wouldn't be too bad to get Obsidious. The Arch Deva, um, once again, another like borderline top 20. I don't think it made my top 20. I think it was more of an honorable mention area, but uh, it's probably a top 30 mythic. 20 red, yellow, purple, white helm, divine human. Choose an ally. Give them 75 attack life and armor and fill their mana. Can only be cast once. Barrier and bless a random ally when matching four or more gems. It's hard to me it's hard for me to remember that like 15 to 20 in the honorable mention area of my top 20. So yeah, borderline top 20. Um, but I think it just fell short. After that, you got uh, the Elder Dragon. 26 green, purple, brown, Karakoth, Daemon, Dragon. Deal damage to all enemies. Create nine cursed gems boosted by cursed enemies. Um, there can only be four cursed enemies, so the boost ratio isn't amazing. But it is a dragon that hits all enemies and curses. So it, it, it's decent. Madness Storm. Last and least is Fallen Valdies, one of the worst in the game. 24 blue, purple, brown, Draxum, undead, mystic, deal damage to all enemies, explode three doom skulls, boosted by divine enemies, silence divine enemies. Weak damage, and it was supposed to be like a divine counter that just never worked. The divine counter was them nerfing divines, not the Fallen Valdies. So Fallen Valdies is the worst choice. I'd rather have you choose any of the other three than that. All right, the legendaries are very ho-hum this week. We got Kerberos, we got Kurg the Dread, we got Spooky Imp, and we have Oni Ross. Oni Ross is probably the worst, and then you have Spooky Imp is the next worst. So it'd be between like Kerberos and Kurg the Dread if you're just for some reason you had to craft a legendary. I might pick this one maybe. 15 green, red, Grosh, knock, daemon, monster. Deal damage to the last two enemies. If there are 13 or more red gems, summon a random daemon. Has a 5% chance to devour on skull damage. It's impervious. So, yeah. Super average legendary. Um, not the greatest. Same with Kerberos here. 16 purple brown, Magrim Woods, daemon, beast. Deal damage to an enemy with a 40% chance to devour them. 50% uh, chance to summon a warg when an enemy dies. Necromancy. Another super average legendary that you don't want to craft. We got Spooky Imp, 14 purple, elemental, deal scattered damage to all enemies and either transform a random enemy into a wraith or all allies gain three magic. You don't really want to be transforming something into a wraith, which could then death mark and kill you um, or drain your mana or whatever. Um, yeah, 
And then you have the Oniros, which is a newer, newer legendary. If it, maybe you missed out on it the first time when it came out like a year ago or something. But 16 red, purple, uh, Divinion Fields, Daemon, Centaur, drain mana from all enemies and inflict fairy fire and burn them. Then summon one to three nightmares. So it doesn't like do anything really. It's a drainer. You're never going to put it on your team. I, d I really feel like it's doesn't have very much of a use. Maybe a defensive Guild Wars situation, maybe. But yeah, that's the Soul Forge. It's mostly, um, I mean, as far as the troops go, it's Obsidious, it's the Archdeva, and then the the Elder Dragon is was like a pay troop that if you don't have it yet, you already had a chance to get it, but this is like this maybe your second chance to get it if you missed it the first time. Weapons, three graves. This is available in the raid shop, so don't get it here. But it's an explodey weapon. Blue gems, Merlantis allies. Summon a Merlantis troop. Positive uh, effect to Merlantis allies. We have the Doom Dirk. Not a good one. But there it is if you need it. Trident of Merlantis. Not a good one, but there it is if you need it. Amber Partisan is blue and green for each Merlantis ally. And it also does damage. Boosted by Merlantis allies. I found myself using this one more, though. Uh, Iron Wave, deal damage to an enemy boosted by merfolk allies, then create a mix of blue and brown for each merfolk ally. Felt to me like blue and brown was a better combo than um, blue and green, so I went with Iron Wave. If you have to choose between the two, I choose Iron Wave. Nature Staff, nothing good. And that's it. So, really, the weapons you can ignore. Unless you just need something for this week and you're in a pickle. The troops, Obsidious or the Archdeva, and then like the Elder Dragon and Oni Rose are like two newer troops that maybe you missed the first time around and you're just for collection purposes. They're one of the final ten of each, you know, legendary and mythic that you need or something. Could see that situation for you. Alright, so that's the Soul Forge. Let's check out the raid event, raid boss. Um, Giant Thrascu. Gargantua of Mountains, it says. Uh, Merlantis used this kingdom's troops in battle. Event Captain Triton Guard Mira has two times magic and two times score in this event only. So yeah, there's just a one boss. You use the raid troop. Um, I bought up to the weapon in the shop so far. Like, there is more rewards here. You get the shiny stuff. It's one of those events where you have the extra rewards with the shiny keys, so... We're still kind of trying to figure out how far into the shop you need to buy. I buy up to the weapon to start with, and then I go from there. So I bought up to the weapon. I did uh, minor blues that I have so many of. I don't even care if I accidentally wasted them, and I'm going to buy more in the shop. Like, I don't care. Um, I would rather have a chance at not spending as many gems than um, saving blue minor blues that I can just get so easily. Gems you can't get so easily. Like, minor blues, I feel like, are falling from the sky these days, so... Yeah, um, I have a video on this for, as far as the teams go, so go check it out, please. I'll link it at the end of this video in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, or you can just look at my channel and find it. I'll probably post it on the homepage of the channel, so it's hard to miss. That's raids. You'll have one raid boss. You got the raid captain. You got to use the raid captain. The raid captain will one-shot the boss and then make a team to kill the rest of the stuff. It's not too hard. It's like the second or third easiest event in the, in the entire game. Um, so yeah, we got raids done, we got Soul Forge done. Let's go to the shop. Get your spoils of war. You got the Manta Raider. This is the Glory Shop troop. 12 a green, a purple, Merlantis, Merfolk Beast. By the way, the um the uh the Captain Mira troop, the raid boss troop is the shiny troop, so it's not a good one. I wouldn't use your shiny keys this week. Wait for something better. Um, Manta Raider, 12, green, purple, Merlantis, Merfolk Beast. Deal damage to two random enemies and shuffle the enemy team. 20% chance to dodge skull damage, so merge myself and I take damage. Nothing special at all. It's got Arcane Venom Trait Stones, two per. So that is green and purple. Let's go see what you can, uh, fully trait. Just because, yeah, you can use your glory in the shop right now on the Manta Raider. Get those Trait Stones, take them here... And then fully trade troops that you don't have fully traded yet. So we got stuff like Arachnian Weaver, Creeping Doom, and Pervious Stealthy. Kurandara has Curse of Damnation and a Curse of Ru and Ruin. 
Queen Aurora has that rainbow link. Zest King has unstable possession. Elder Dragon has nothing. Um, Vernalis with the enchanted vines. Does Virago have anything? No. Uh, Yasmin's Chosen, Wild Vines. Um, first Mate, Axe, Lubber, Empowered Converter, Blue to Red. Moon Rabbit, Empowered Converter, Blue to Yellow. Secret. Leprechaun and Powered Exploder, Green Gems. Very important. This is a uh, hey Rowan team. What the heck, uh, Leprechaun? I need. Why is Leprechaun so good? Because he's an Empowered Exploder. So if you get it fully traded at the very start of battle, you can blow up some green and um, get up your Rowan. And it doesn't just blow up green. It blows up green and all the gems around the, each green that you blow up. So if you only have three, four, five, six green gems instead of 19 like mine says, that's based on your magic. So the more magic you'll get, the more that'll go up. But even 3, 4, 5, 6 is fine because you're blowing up the green and all 8 gems around that one gem. You get 50% mana for each thing you explode. So you could hit some blue too. and like So it sounds like, oh, I'm only blowing up 4 green. How's, how's that going to get up Rowan? Well, you can blow up the 4 green and then maybe each of the 4 green also hits 2 blue. And now you got her up. Uh... I think Spirit Fox empowered, used sometimes. Greed empowered gold troop. Some people still do gold farming, and that's a troop you might need. Greed and also is useful for the Iron Hawk thing if you don't want to do Sister Superior. Siren is empowered, sometimes used on like defensive Guild Wars teams. Sister of Nightmares has that swift 75% mana start. Then you got Trickster 75% exploder. Kind of a decent uh, Leprechaun re uh, replacement. If you don't have Leprechaun for some reason, you can go get Trickster pretty quick. I mean, I need to start talking about that. The Warrens. Just go to the Warrens and throw Chaos Shards. If you're having trouble getting um, Leprechaun, you can get an almost direct replacement here with Trickster. And he's not going to be as elusive because you can just go straight to his faction and throw Chaos Shards and get him very quickly. So, yeah, that's not even a thing. Like, oh, I don't have Leprechaun. Well, go get Trickster then. Like, you should... Anyway. Alright, so that's the event key drop table. Or no, that was the Glory Shop uh, trade stone stuff. Which, hey, it's okay. A lot of empowered stuff. And right, now we'll do the event key drop table. We got Merlantis. Which is an okay one. Not the worst ever, but not one you kind of save up for, though. When you're saving event keys, you're saving for very, very specific, like, three kingdoms out of the 37, 38 kingdoms. You're not just doing all of them. Um, base rarity. And we'll do show all. All right, you got Aquaticus, solid. Picea, solid. Um, Undyne, not as good. Kind of more defensive. Um, Caribidus, not good. Leviathan, not good. Nimue, kind of underrated. Um, Triton, if you don't have your 50% Merfolk start, he's a uh, useful, and he has a decent spell too. Sometimes they don't, like Asensia, who's terrible. Um, this guy's in the uh, uh, underworld, so don't worry about him. Azura's pretty good. I think you get her for free though. Um, yeah, it's pretty top heavy. Pretty top heavy, and the and the top isn't super heavy. You know what I mean? So it wouldn't be the worst one ever if you're just so impatient and you and you have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand event keys, and you're super impatient. Um, you could, uh, you know, Piscean Aquaticus are decent, but they're not top twenty mythics. So you're throwing event keys at something that doesn't even have a top twenty mythic or even a ten, top ten uh, legendary. So. You kind of want to throw your event keys at top 10 mythics or top 5 legendaries, not at just random okay mythics and, you know, underrated legendaries with a 50% start troop here. Not the best place to do it, but not the worst in the world either. It's like a B-tier B, B -minus tier kingdom to throw event keys at. 
Still got S's and A's ahead of that, too, and B pluses and B's. So it's it's down there in the B minus area as far as a, a kingdom to throw vent keys at. It's not an S, it's not an A plus, it's not an A, it's not an A minus, it's not a B plus, not a B. It's like a B minus or so. It's somewhere around there. But it's not a C, it's not a D, it's not an F. Um, okay, so that's the event key drop table. Piscea's, I like Piscea, I like Aquaticus, but neither one are top 10s or top 20s. Um, what is next? What else is going on this week? Right now, today, we're doing the raid event. We're doing the campaign. We're doing our little task up top. We're doing our dungeon. We're doing our adventure board. Um, we are maybe starting the Underspire. Maybe starting the Epic Trials. Stuff like that. Tomorrow, we have Sea of Sorrow. Tuesday morning. I'll have a video for you at reset. Check it out, please. A uh, new pet on Wednesday. I'll have a live stream at 10 a.m. Er Let's do, um, let's make the live stream at, um, 11 a.m. EST. I want to try it because the last Wednesday, last Wednesday's live stream was kind of dead. So let's try to move the time a little bit. We'll go to 11 a.m. EST, uh, this upcoming Wednesday, two days from now. Um, and then Thursday we have the, um, Tidecaller class event. Tidecaller is decent. Not the best, not the worst. It's right around, uh, the Plague Lord area as far as, uh, how good it is. Um, it's not Titan or Elementalist, but it's not like Knight or or something like that. So it's in the middle once again. Merlantis is like a B minus all around, all the way around, you know. Um, and then you have Friday, which is City of Thieves. Um, City of Thieves is getting a new troop. City of Thieves is getting a deep delve. City of Thieves is the best farming faction in the entire game, so it's going to be interesting to see the deep delve. So. Something I didn't mention before, I heard uh, actually Tacit mention it, which, shout out to him. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. I wonder how the uh, Deep Delve is going to look for City of Thieves. Um, yeah, and that's everything for the week. Alright, let's go do the... let's get the campaign out of the way. Darkstone, as always, was dangerous. After a nasty encounter with some sea hags, we checked the constellations. They pointed us west. Hopefully we're getting close. Gold Digger, Ice Crystal, Slayer, all easy. Nothing you need to uh, concentrate on at all. You get Polly some more pets. You get the, the Hanged Man there. It's a tarot card, which isn't the greatest. They're never really good except for the Empress, which there was a ton of hoopla about the Empress, but now it's kind of died down like always. They can still use, though. And then if you got the Super Duper Pass, the expensive one, you get Dread Captain Grimm. I want to dial back. I might even go change my, my title and my thumbnail for that spoiler video. I kind of want to dial back the gold. Yeah, I did put question marks. I think that absolves me from any kind of, um, you know, if you put question marks after stuff. Ne the gold farming meta. I mean, <sighs> what I meant, and I think I say it in the spoiler video. I mean, it's one of the first gold type of troops like it uses booty gems it boosts boosts off of booty gems hits all enemies i could see a world where you would use a troop that creates booty gems right and also cedric dread captain grim and something else on a team and maybe do some sort of gold farming somewhere maybe you're already like i don't gold farm so this is coming from a guy who thinks you don't need to do that at all but i'm just trying to think ahead spitball here like potentially in the future maybe there's not maybe it's not right now maybe something else has to come out first but a, a troop that hits all enemies and is kind of involved with with gold getting gold could be in the future maybe if he's hit if he hits hard enough and you're clearing quick enough that's kind of how you soul farm you know sacrificial priest or whatever that other troop is that hits all enemies is you boost your souls up then you hit all enemies and you and you soul farm like that. I feel like maybe in the future, Dread Captain Grim maybe could be uh, doing the same thing. So I don't know. You let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm completely wrong on that. It's a troop I'm not going to get for months and months and months. It's a thing that I don't even do, gold farming. So just keep that in mind as I say those things that I'm not super interested in it and I'm not going to get the troop for months. So don't go like buying the pass based on me saying that, please, because I'm not sure. Just conjecture, just uh, trying to maybe predict the future there. Darkstone, as always, was dangerous. After now, I already read that. Okay, but what 
we're, re we're getting uh, HP, 5 HP. Sometimes, you know, I want to make sure, like, if I say something, I want to clarify. I don't want anybody buying the pass or something just to get that troop early. Because I said maybe, question mark, it could be the next gold farming troop in the future at some point. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, Let's do the Underspire because it's way faster than the Epic Trials. Here's the team I'm rolling with at the moment. I got Deep King, Iron Wave, Deep King, Triton. Iron Wave makes blue and brown. Deep King uses blue and brown. Triton starts everybody with 50% mana. Deep King does true damage. I don't go super deep. Bang. Dead. Got him in first slot so he can use that Enrage. I think this will work for quite a while. As always, though, you know, if you're going super duper duper deep, let's talk about it. Maybe you use Picea, right? If you're going super duper duper deep. I wouldn't use it right away, but maybe super deep you use Picea, right? Um, but other than that, you know, I think I got the team right here. Maybe you take one Deep King off and you put a Picea on, and that's your new team once you get to, like, the fourth or fifth boss. I think two Deep Kings is the way to go up until then. If you're doing this for free, no gems invested or as cheap as possible, I think double Deep King will take you as far as you need to go. If you are going to the seventh boss and spending all your gems, then uh, you might want to throw Picea on there and take this Deep King off. Just to give yourself a chance to devour the higher... Uh, stat troops. Uh, I guess I should show you the uh, team code, huh? Kind of not doing the team code thing in the comments anymore. Didn't really get in... I'm looking for results, so... I don't feel like it did anything. And it just takes more time. So it's right there on the screen. You can pause. You can write it down yourself. Um, I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. I never did team codes ever. I feel like it's kind of... Anyway, it is what it is. Go the Deep King, Iron Wave, the Deep King, Triton. And tie Caller's the class. The banner is double blue, yellow, minus green. It doesn't take that much more time to not copy-paste a team code. It does take me a lot of time to put in three team codes on a video. So, And I did not see results from it. Um, anyway, let's go do the Epic Trials, Merlantis. This one is one of those where you do one team early and then you do a different team later, I think. If I was going to recommend you a deep team, it would not be this. I used this one because I'd had none of it done, so I was doing this at first. And the reason I was doing this at first is Mervorax has double skull damage versus submerged enemies. And the whole enemy team is trying to submerge themselves. So you're going to do double skull damage to everything on their team. Um, and then Carrie Bittis um, will has a chance to devour. Boosted by 3% for each submerged ally and enemy. Which is never going to be like a ton. The most it can be is what? Like 7? So like a 30% chance or something like that? But it's nice when it happens, and having him in second slot, if it gets the Devour, its attack goes way up. And then you have another thing that can hit really hard with Skulls. Zero's in third slot, Coral Golem, just, I was ignoring it kind of, um, early. But I think for the later battles, you're gonna put Coral Golem, and then you're just gonna, like, move your whole team like that. So you have Coral Golem as your tank. Plus, it will submerge your whole team. That way, Carrie Bittis has a little bit of a higher chance to devour. Then you got your Mervorax here for the double skull damage versus submerged. Then you have Carrie Bittis, hoping it gets a couple devours. So it has tons of attack if it ever gets down to uh, losing. If you ever lose these two, at least you got Carrie Bittis with a ton of attack and life and armor by then, hopefully. And then Azura at the bottom as your mana generator, um, taking in purple. So let's try it like this. Um... I did the Mervorax. I, did, I just totally ignored Coral Golem up until I got to the Epic Trials, though. He's a tank, but that's pretty much all he's doing besides submerging your team to help carry Bettis. Which I guess we do want to do, but we want to do that when we have carry Bettis and when we can hit, like, three or four green. But as always, don't let the enemy take Skulls. 
Um, let's cast this. All right, we got everything up. You kind of want to have everything up, too. So now we're going to do the uh, Coro Golem. Try to hit as many green as we can. So we can hit. There's got to be a three somewhere, huh? Keep seeing. Are you kidding me? Maybe we wait. Maybe we'll cast this first. All right, here we go. Now we got a three right here. Let's go for it. And now I think it like doesn't count itself though, right? It's only a plus nine, so we get a 19% chance to devour. You could wait till the enemy um, submerges, I guess, but you're not gonna really do that. So this might be one where you have to get lucky and um, get a couple devours. Some people. If your stats are low. I don't even know if I leveled, if I have all these troops fully leveled and stuff. I didn't check. I guess I do. All right, we got our Coral Golem again. We could do that again. Um, let's do this first. And... All right, let's do it again. Okay, now we have what? 15, so a 25% chance to devour. And I should have took the skulls. Um, we got Azura. So it could be a thing where you're retrying and retrying until you actually get the carry bitus devour. You know? I'm gonna wait. No point in submerging if we're just going to cast and lose our submerge or... You want to kind of submer... You want to do the Coral Golem right before you cast the Carry Bittus. So you want to have the Carry Bittus up. At the time. Like, right now is fine. So let's go hit as much green as we can. There's two here, two here, two there, two there. We can only hit two, though. Eh, that's probably fine. Of course, I hit Carry Bittus, so I don't think that counts. Let's take the Skulls. Plus six. We got a 16% chance. Oh well, fire it off. And we got the red. We got the skulls. We have the green. And another thing, you could cast this guy before you cast Azura, because you can put the blue on the board and then explode more blue. It's an extra turn though, I gotta grab that. Now we can do this. It's kind of one of those deals where you cast something immediately before something else. And it's it's cast this before you cast this. And it's cast this before you cast this. Just to give them more value. So now we're gonna we're giving the carry bitus more value by casting this right before it. Like immediately before it. So now it has a 12%. It has a 22% chance. But I gotta take these skulls. We're just gonna screw up my freaking submerge. Well, we got the kill there. And now it's Azura time. Which should get us rolling again. Skulls. Skulls. Uh, we can cast this. Okay, we're gonna wait on the coral golem though until we get carry bitus up. We need red, we need blue. And we don't have it. There we go though. Alright now, looking for four, there we go. Perfect. Carry bitus should have a decent shot here. 18. 28% chance. That might be the highest that we're ever gonna have. Got it. So now carry bitus has 24. 240 attack and lots of life. So we're probably going to win now. Even if we lose every other troop, we'll still have carry Bittus. Let's take purple. Axolotl. Take blue, I guess. Some skulls. Uh, there's red, there's brown, there's yellow. Let's do red into yellow. Take the blue. Okay, we got them both right now. Let's go right here. 
And then we have a 22% chance. Didn't get it. Because that's the way, you're, like, the fast way you're going to win is if you get Devours. Because Carry Bettis doesn't hit very hard. Ah, I should have cast the other thing first. It's all right, though. I like how our Coral Golem also, like, just can't die. Because every time you cast it, it gains life and armor. For every green gem destroyed. Or whatever, you know? I think it's Submerge is based on green, but it also gains that life and armor. Which is great. Keeps it alive. But we don't want to cast it until we have Carry Bettis up, right? There we go. Just give yourself a higher chance. It doesn't give you that much of a higher chance, but it's better than, than nothing. Give yourself that little bit of an extra chance. Like three right here. We got four down here too. Let's do four. Green extra turn. All right, so 25% chance. Bang. Carry Bettis probably can't be killed now. And 342 attack. I almost want to put it up one, because it's not even getting blocked by this guy. It's just like the uh, double skull damage. So that could be a thing. Maybe you put Carry Bettis up a slot. But he's in the most... He's like your win condition, so you don't really want to put him up higher, because if you have less stats than me, and you lose your Coral Golem, now your Carry Bettis is taking shots on the chin. So that's why he's in third slot. I think that'll work the best for the most people. Uh, but if you're a high-level player with a lot of stats, you could throw Carry Bettis up another slot right there. In case your Coral Golem dies, and you have a troop with 342 attack... Which is slightly higher than doubling your... Oh, uh, well, it's way higher than doubling your... So, yeah. Could do that. We got two right now. I mean, that's not going to get much better. Um, we could try for it, though. Let's do three. All right. Got a little bit better. Um, we got a 22% chance. That at 19 HP, though. So it didn't matter. But, yeah, that's the Epic Trials. Um, it's kind of going to be, like... For some people, it's going to be a thing where you're just going to have to get lucky with the Carry Bittus. Um, but if you take my advice and all the, uh, tips I gave you, it'll make it much more, um, easier to make it actually happen. Always wait to cast the Coral Golem until you already have Carry Bittus ready to go. Its spell is ready. So then you cast Coral Golem and then immediately cast Carry Bittus right after the Coral Golem. You could do the same thing with Mervorax and Azura. You could, uh, wait until you have both of them up and then cast Mervorax and then immediately cast Azura. So you have more blue to explode. Um, and you can move Carry Bittis up a slot, because there's no reason. The only thing, oh, the reason I say that is because your Carry Bittis will be gaining so much attack from devouring that if you happen to lose your Coral Golem, you now have a giant Carry Bittis with a bunch of attack hitting things with skulls. So, but same thing with Mervorax. It, it has the double skull damage to, uh, submerged, so it's not terrible to leave here. And it gives you a little bit of a buffer zone, so you don't lose your only... Like, if you lose your carry Bettis, you're screwed. So, if you got lower stats, I wouldn't. I would do what I have here. I think most people should put it like this. But if you're a super high-level player, you could do that. And uh, if, you have, if you're super high-level, you're probably not losing your Coral Golem, though. So, it's almost like this is for everybody. Anyway, I talk too much. Uh, as far as um, medals go, I would do uh, double season. Strip, or, no, you're doing mostly... I guess you're doing mostly spell damage, so maybe triple nisha i feel like the anu doesn't get like for a super long battle to have a 20 percent mana start it's better to have that extra eight magic than to have that little bit of an extra mana start because you're going to be casting way more spells than you are you're not trying to rush it it's like a long battle so i would use three nishas anyway that's epic trials uh, i think that's everything um yeah Chatathon this Sunday, September 24th. But Crack of Dawn will make it fun too. You can force me to stream all day. You can uh, show me what it's like to work for eight to nine hours um, on a Sunday. But other than that, like, share, subscribe. So you're joining helps a lot to hear. Get about the channel comp below. Faction of video is tomorrow, bottom left hand corner. If you need those raid teams, peace out.